the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Indianapolis Colts and the Cincinnati Bengals. And it's coming up next. It's the NFL on EA Sports as we welcome you into Paycor Stadium on the riverfront here in Cincinnati. Today we've got a compelling AFC matchup for you as it'll be the Indianapolis Colts taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. From up top next to Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And folks, we were already excited for this game. And then before the contest, you and I are down on the field outside the white lines. Yes, we were following the rules. We were following the rules. And a ball comes over our direction, but we can't see it. Somebody yells heads up. And instinctively, you turn around and you snare it one-handed with your off left hand. So now we're really ready for football. No gloves either. No gloves. No gloves. Not like what the guys are wearing playing the game now. But wasn't that a whole lot better than that time we were down there? and I got the coffee spilled on me when I got nailed by the punt returner. That happened to the Vikings, right? Yes, yeah, a much better job of being heads up this time. Thank you for the, thank you for the notice. Here's the punter, Rigoberto Sanchez, on to get us started. And we are underway from Cincinnati. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Here come the Bengals now to take over. And they're brought out by the former Washington Husky, undrafted back in 2019, Jake Browning. Every quarterback in the NFL has a little bit of his own signature style out there, but for this guy, he really plays the game in a different way. It's led to a couple double takes from us up here as we see him as something truly unique. It's not that he's just the strongest passer or the best athlete to ever play the position. He just has a certain way of seeing the action and allows him to make some special plays out there. Now Browning. Man open, that's Jamai Chase complete. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. A good start offensively. 15 yards of the game's initial play. And we see the emphasis early here. Get your star receiver involved, able to do it successfully. Not a bad start to begin with, that's for sure. And to me, this play says, our guy is better than your guy's up. Because you know, a player of his stature, he won't just be single covered all game long. He's going to involve multiple people, and right away, they told the other team, guess what? He's just better. And as a quarterback, you always want to exploit gaps in the defense, and he finds one here. Crossing route, working from right to left across the field. And once you get defenders going in the wrong direction, it is awfully hard for them to pivot back, and you end up getting the first down. A first carry for the former Oklahoma Sooner, Joe Mixon. And they'll get this just to the 47, one-yard gain. I think if we put together a job description for a middle linebacker, we would start with being able to hold down things in the middle of the line of scrimmage and be able to take on blockers. But how about the guys who can go sideline to sideline and make plays? Love a guy that can do that. We saw a perfect example of it right there. Back to Mixon on second down. And great blocking downfield as he's got this almost to the 35-yard line. 12 yards that time and a Cincinnati first down. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. Mixon with a first down carry. DeForest Buckner in on the tackle. He may be a bit undersized compared to the modern-day NFL defensive tackle, but what he lacks in size, he definitely makes up for in his ability to make tackles in the run game as well. Second and nine. Once again, they run with Mixon. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. To throw, Browning. 
They'll set up the screen here to mix him. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. So on fourth down, on is Evan McPherson and the Bengal field goal unit. On the left hash, this from 48 yards. McPherson's kick is good. And the Bengals are on the board first here. It's 3 0. They were probably hoping to get him a little bit closer for a shorter field goal, but he was able to get it done from deep. Nice little tester for him to begin things, huh? I think he was open for a little bit more of a chip shot. Instead, they made him stretch it out a little bit, but he's got to feel great now that he put it through the pipes. So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. Leading them out, still one of the most recognizable QBs in the game and one of the most fun QBs in his fifth season, it's Gardner Minshew. And how about this young man? Took the NFL world by storm as a six-round rookie, signature mullet, mustache, but 21 touchdowns for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Great personality, and everyone gravitates towards this guy. Teammates love to win with a quarterback who leads them like that, and fans love to root for a guy who seems just like them. Now Minshew on first and 10. And he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. Trey Hendrickson showing off his pass rush repertoire that time. It may be cliche, but it is something that holds up over time, doesn't it? If you're the visitors, you don't want to let the crowd in the game early. Yeah, and that's exactly what they did there. But you said also this defense, they're going to give them a lot of looks like we just saw there, aren't they? They certainly are. They're a proud unit, and they're going to ride the momentum of this crowd with them. And that's why they got after them early. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Well, as we get ready for third down, let's go back and recap here. The sack on the first play of this drive, that threw a wrench in what they were trying to accomplish because... They were compelled to throw the ball on second down. A running play was not in the works. And that incompletion set up another passing down here on third and long. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. I can assure you setting up the screen is much more difficult than it appears. It requires excellent timing from everyone on the offense. And a defense's number one goal is to throw that timing off. On fourth down, the Colts will call on Rigoberto Sanchez for the punt. Charlie Jones deep for Cincinnati. And taken at the 46. It'll be a 39-yard punt, four on the return. And this offense will take over right at the midfield stripe with a first and ten. A very good starting field position for the Bengals here as they come up first and 10 right at the 50-yard line. It's Mixon on the counter. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Here's Browning. This one caught downfield by Higgins. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. 27 yards there, a first down.
Looking to throw. Browning. And that'll be caught. Touchdown, Bengals. It's Tyler Boyd. A 24-yard touchdown as his guys are able to extend their lead. And that drive happened quickly, which is great because they scored the points, but then their defense has to come right back out on the field. It is exciting, isn't it, for the offense to do that? The defense is saying, okay, that's cool, but let's not make it a habit. We need to get some rest sometime. Evan McPherson now for the PAT. He's got it, and now it's a 10-0 lead here in the opening corner. Scoring summary, three-play drive, and it's finished off by the touchdown from Tyler Boyd. So an early 10-0 lead for them now as they kick it away. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. They'll look to get something started. They need to down 10-0 early as they've got it first and 10. They'll run with Taylor to begin the drive. Escapes the defender. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. Thought they were going to have him down a lot earlier, but he was able to shed that tackle. Shows the value of the weight room, doesn't it? Shows the value of the attitude when you run the football. Don't go down easily. Break a few tackles. Gain some additional yardage. Off play action, it's Minshew. This one complete to Alec Pierce. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. Boy, a pair of big plays here. This one going for 29. You can almost hear the sigh of relief coming from their sideline and from their point on the field because this has been a tough start for them thus far. A much-needed first down there. They needed something good to happen. Plays like that will continue to help them dig out of this hole. They'll go play action here with Minshew. This taken in by Downs. And he is out of bounds right around the 10-yard line. That's over 40 yards of movement with those last two plays. Boy, how about the speed with which this offense can get down the field? It's taken them no time at all to get down here. And now they're set up with a first and goal. So three plays already first and goal, and they are wasting little time. Looking to throw it, Minshew. Gonna go down, sacked right around the 17. Mike Hilton, always dangerous on the corner blitz, and he gets the sack. Well, that's not how you hope to draw it up there on first and goal, CD, by taking a sack like that. Well, they tried to be aggressive, didn't they? They didn't want to try and work their way past the goal line. They wanted it right there on that play. Unfortunately, it backfired against them. Looking for Pearson, he's got him. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Alec Pierce from 17 yards out. And the Colts are back within a score. Well, that's what I call an answer right there. They gave up a sack on the previous play. How about what they did to finish things off, turning it right back around? That's the response, and that O-line feels a lot better now, don't they? Yeah, without a doubt, because give up the sack on the previous play, that just hurts those guys, because they never want to see their guy get hit. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And that'll cut it to three at Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. This taken in right around the goal line. 
And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. The Bengal offense now gets set to head back out onto the field. First and ten, Browning. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked up by Juju Brents. And they have the football that will set up shop at the 33-yard line. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Up the middle, here's Taylor. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. But that run right there was an offensive line coach's dream, wasn't it? The guys picked up all their assignments, created a nice gap for the running back to get through, pick up seven yards. Yeah, he's probably chortling on the headset right now, saying, we got it going, boys, let's keep it going. So from the 26-yard line, here's second and three. Minshew sets to throw. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. We talk all the time about playmakers on offense, but let's face it, there are plenty of playmakers on defense, too. I think we just saw an example of one, didn't we? Not force that incompletion. Yeah, he's a great corner. They got a couple of them on that side of the football. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Here's Minshew. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A field goal helps, but a touchdown gets you the lead. That had to be the message transmitted in the huddle. And they deliver there as that throw is going to keep the drive alive. And even better than that, set them up with a first and goal. They'll run here with Taylor. And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Jonathan Taylor taking it in from seven yards away. And the Colts have taken the lead. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of a season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And the lead is now 14 to 10. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back. But make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. A run on first down, but it's not going to get him much. Maybe a yard, and that's all. Now that's the type of play that'll fire up the defense, hold them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all 
but they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. Still nine yards to go on second down from the 27. Back to throw. Browning. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Oh, man. For him to be that wide open and drop it, sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And, yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. And got his man complete! And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Give him 32 on the play. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play that picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. A draw play for Mixon. And he's going to be stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. Nothing there for him. Second down. No luck whatsoever there on the draw. Yeah, they're supposed to use their aggressiveness against them. That was the hope. But maybe they had too big of a meal last night. A half step slow, and he ends up running right into the meat of the defense. Back to throw now on second and 10. He gets this one to Boyd. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. First down marker at the 31. It's third down. Off play action. Browning. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 28. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. And that's one of the dangers of the quick game. If you only have a two- or three-step drop, if you don't get the ball to someone open right away, those defenders are right near the line of scrimmage and then get on top of you in a heartbeat. Now a second and ten. Out of the shotgun, they run with Mixon. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. I think we got to give it up for him right there. That's a heck of an athletic move for a big man right in the middle of the line. How about the play he makes there? Nowhere to run, and he finishes that one off for a loss. On third down, Browning. Throw out right, going to be incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. And a smart play there. He's probably saying, I wish I would have done that on the last drive instead of throwing the interception. Evan McPherson out for the Bengal field goal. He made his first, this from 47 yards out. McPherson's kick is good, and the lead is down to one now at 14-13. He might be being set up here for a busy ball game already. Two kicks here in the first quarter, and he's knocked both through the post. And for now, you know they'll be happy getting those three points, but what they really want is to find a way for him to kick extra points instead of field goals. So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Indy offense at the line and set to go. 
A carry by Taylor to start the drive. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. Defensively, Sam Hubbard, the former Buckeye, there to stop him. We are in for a good one as we're through one on EA Sports. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Colts in possession. Now second and five, as they've got it as we resume action. Now Minshew. He's got his man. It's Pierce. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. They give to Taylor out of the gun and give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. From the 48-yard line, here's the second and five. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. His throw incomplete. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move all over the place to try and find good matchups. And they had one, they were just unable to complete the pass. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Out of the gun is Minshew. And that will be incomplete. This defense has certainly played well so far in this game, and the coverage has been tight on just about every throw. Forced a few here so far in this game, and now it brings up fourth down. To put on fourth down, here's Rigoberto Sanchez. And this is a beauty as that ball is going to angle out at the six-yard line. The Bengals set to take over. So well done there. And these punters, they get more specialized and better each and every year, don't they? They sure do. And now it's really not the American punters. It's the Australian punters with their kicking academies and that flat drop and just kind of kicking the nose of the football. They're able to almost stop it where they want to like a good golfer can check one up. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And he'll take this forward only up to about the seven. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. Looking to throw on second down. Brown able to find Higgins. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 20. Over 70 yards receiving now for him in his first half alone as he's got a first down on that last catch. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Inside handoff to Mixon. Gets around him. Oh, he breaks a tackle, and he's got an alley. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 40. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice game there. This one goes for 20. Dance class, anyone? Did you see the steps between the quarterback and the running back? Well, you need for a good counter. You have to have it because you're setting up your blocking. There's a timing element as well. But they have to marry up their steps. Otherwise, that timing gets thrown out the window. Timing was great there at a big run. Back to Mixon on first down. Now he's able to break through one tackle, but it slowed him down enough that he could only manage getting back to the line of scrimmage. Defense able to get there, swarm to the football. Zilch, zero, not a there for the offense, Charles. Yeah, it really was an example of good team defense, wasn't it? Everyone handled their responsibilities, and they held them to no gain. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. He's going to have the hook up here to chase. There he goes, left side. And they'll get him to the ground. And he has another first down at the Colts 41-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Barney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it 
back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really that's really a whole lot cool. of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Well, let's see who's faster. Throwing on first down. Brown, open man is Higgins. And that's good for a gain of six. And that's going to bring up second down. Operating from the gun. Brown. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. They overload him that time on the safety blitz, and he winds up being dropped for a loss of seven. They've been moving the ball well offensively, really getting into a groove. Last play, pass completion. Now, finally, the defense gets there. And you have to find a way to disrupt their rhythm. Do you do it with coverage, or do you do it with pressure? They elected to go with pressure, and it was the right call. is the target incomplete. As defensive coordinators around the league tell me all the time, that throw is not for every quarterback because you've really got to drive the ball downfield. It's going to be a tight window for him to fit that one into. In this case, unsuccessfully. So on fourth down, on is Brad Robbins to punt for the Bengals. A deep to return is Josh Downs. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. Here comes Jonathan Taylor and his teammates. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. And Minshew and the Colts going to come up here first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And that is incomplete here. After the incompletion, they'll try once more from the 20-yard line on second and 10. They're going to look to throw. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside. Ball's delivered. Gets both feet down for the completion. Now we've got whistles and a flag. Looked like one of the Colts linemen might have jumped. That flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. Still first down. The false start backs him up five, first and 15. And motioning left, that's Pittman. Now here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead a give to Taylor. And he'll get a couple up to the 29. Well, obviously, they would have at least liked to have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. Instead, now, they're dealing with second and long. I thought they would have passed it after the penalty. Probably wish they would have now. Second down, another run with Taylor. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. Three yards on the pickup there, and they've got it back to third and 10. Right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. They'll set up the screen to Taylor, and he has stopped just short on third down. Got nine yards, but needed 10. And that doesn't have to gain big yardage. It should be an impactful play, because if you can get those pass rushers second-guessing themselves, that they might get hit with a screen, maybe you can wind up slowing them down just a step. And if you do that, that's a win for that play. 
As Sanchez on to punt here as he sends this one away. And looking up into the sun, he's able to make the fair catch inside the 20-yard line. And they call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Now Browning, and he's taken down, back at his own seven. Quinny Pay getting in there and burying him behind the line. Chalk that one up to bad acting, I guess, because they certainly failed to sell the handoff, and the pressure stayed keyed in on the quarterback. No Oscar awards for this offense, just a loss of yardage. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. To throw, Browning. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. And the Bengals on third down, two for five to this point. This will be third and 19. Looking to throw, Browning. Looking deep here for Chase. And unable to connect, incomplete. Uh, give them credit, they took their shot, but it's gonna bring up fourth down. Two things you can do in that situation, run and punt the football or try and take your shot at getting the first down. They chose the latter, but they'll have to punt all the same. The Bengals bring out their punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And that's taken on his own 46. Shrugs the tackle, and now the rookie's free! Touchdown, Indianapolis! A 54-yard punt return there, and the Colts are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Hey, rookie, that's the way to make an impression. Return one for a touchdown. Yeah, welcome to the party. We saw him fielding those punts before the game, and he just had a little bit of a look in his eye, didn't he? He did. He was a confident young man, and now we know why. Gay is on for the point after. And with that, the lead is up to eight. Well, we know he has home run hitting ability in the punt return department, and he showcases it there all the way back for six. So after surrendering the punt return for a score, let's see what they can do in turn on this kickoff. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions last time out. They had to punt it away, this time hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Throwing to start the drive. Browning. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. 
And he's certainly not a guy that drops that football very often. Indeed, because that's a bit of a surprise. I know he's in the middle of some traffic and people, bodies all around him, but he usually has the focus to haul that one in. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. To throw again, Browning. And that'll fall incomplete. He was hit just as he let that go. And now it's third down. A couple of quick incompletions, and now they're just one more away from getting off the field. They've got options now. Could they dial up a blitz here or just drop everyone into coverage to crowd the throwing lanes? So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. This one hauled in by Sample. And this effort will not get it done. He stopped well short of the first down at the 29. They'll wind up getting just a yard out of it. And that'll bring up fourth down. Excellent job there defensively. Gave up the underneath to the tight end on third down. And they made sure that they did their job. Got him on the ground and prevented him picking up a first down. And he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. 39-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Indianapolis offense ready to go again. No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and 10 as this new drive starts. And Minshew and the Colts going to come up here first and 10 at their 35-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. That's complete to Pierce. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. When the hitch route has run really well, that jab step off the line of scrimmage by the receiver, which is designed to back up the defender and give him a little bit of space, all you want there get that space, catch the football, and then make a move and pick up extra yardage. And that's exactly what he got done there. First and 10, Taylor now. And across midfield he goes and into Bengal territory. And a tackle there by Jermaine Pratt. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Throwing on second down now, Minshew. A quick throw there is incomplete. He was looking for Michael Pittman that time, and it's third and five. He'll drop to throw. The Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. There for the sack, B.J. Hill. They were trying to set up a screen there, but that one just too slow and developing. Yeah, too slow and developing and well read because that ends up being a bad feeling for the quarterback. When he's got no blocking in front of him, his guys are just going to let defenders go, and they're coming for him. So if it's not there, you just got to throw the ball on the turf at your running back speed. Out is Rigoberto Sanchez on fourth down to punt this thing. Personal foul. Face man. Defense. So a tug on the face mask, and that's going to cost him 15 yards. And sometimes it'll go unnoticed, but that one, pretty obvious for everyone to see. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Mixing up the middle. And not much of an opening there as he's only going to get this to about the 32.
Now second and nine. Here's Browning. They'll set up the screen here to mix it. And he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Nothing on the screen that time. Now it's third down. So many screen passes are the result of excellent acting by everyone. But sometimes the guy who's getting the ball tips the play off. <laughs> you know, the running back, because he's, he's eager to get the pass. And sometimes he doesn't act very well about whether he's going to block or leak out or whatever. And I think that they saw that, and that's why they were able to get to him on it. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. A gain of 26 on the third down conversion. First down, Browning. And his throw is going to be incomplete. It's always tough for the guys throwing the football when they think they've got a completion and the ball's almost there, and then someone sneaks a hand or two in and bats it away. Second and ten. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Oh, that'll be incomplete. Oh, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. They'll look to throw again. He's got his target. That's complete. And Inside the 15 before they drop him. 27 yards there on a very nice third down conversion. Here's a first and 10 at the 14 yard line. Again, he'll drop to throw. This goes out wide from Nixon. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Now a timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. From the five now, second and a yard. Back to throw again. And that'll be caught. Touchdown, Bengals. It's Tyler Boyd. A great effort there with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Bengals get a late score here the final minute of the first half. Yeah, touchdown. I love it. Now it's only a two-point game. I know it's the first half, but you got to think. Go for two, tie it up, go into the locker room. What are you doing? Come on. You're bold. You're bold. It's real easy to be bold sitting up here yeah, rather is, than right? down we, there and making that decision. We don't have to make those decisions. Either way, a little time left on the clock here in the second quarter. We'll see how this all plays out. A little surprising they wouldn't go for two, but this is up and good. And this is now a one-point game. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. And the Colts about to go on offense one final time in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. A little over 
20 seconds remaining in the half as they'll line up here first and 10. Looking to throw it, Minshew. And he's got Pierce. And he'll be taken down right there at the 38. 16 yards to pick up there. The Colts have a first down. So we've reached halftime in a wild first half. We'll take a minute to catch our breath. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw former rushing champ Jonathan Taylor be a big time factor in that first half. He had a touchdown run that helped get his guys this halftime lead. Okay, coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. These offenses have been in fine form. What will the second half bring us as we are underway in quarter three? And this taken in at the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And the Colts going to take over on offense to begin this third quarter. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively. Just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to, how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. 15 yards is the pick up there and the drive starting very nicely. First down. As they began this drive, I was wondering how they were going to attack since they're playing with the lead. Would they continue to try and push the ball downfield? Well, after one play, it appears that the answer is yes. One play has him to the 37 here for first and 10. To the right side, this is Taylor. And this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46. And that's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And you know, oftentimes the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. We are right there about to break a big one. From the 46, here's second down and a yard. Mitch, you're going to try and run. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down call it no gain on the keeper and it's going to bring up a third down now we've got whistles and a flag looked like one of the Colts linemen might have jumped so they accept the penalty of course and push the offense backwards a bit well, that's a tough, costly penalty because now it makes it third and six after the false start. Hits his target to tight end Mo Alley Cox. And he gets us to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. When you get a big tight end like this, sometimes it takes more than one man to bring him down. Oftentimes, your best bet just jump on and hold on and wait for your teammates to arrive to help get him on the ground. Running straight ahead, Taylor. Oh, what a juke into space. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. 88 yards rushing here for Taylor. He's got a first down. They went with the nickel look defensively, so they had five defensive backs in there. Didn't help them stop the run. Yeah, I love that, the nickel look. Five cents, five DBs. But what also happens then, you take a big body off the field in order to insert that guy. So you're taking a big off for a little, and oftentimes you can run the football effectively against that defense. 
Back to Taylor on first down. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Second and a couple. Left side, he finds Pierce. An eligible receiver downfield, offense. Too far downfield, something those linemen have to watch out for, and that time it costs them. Still second down. Play action, it's Minshew. He'll drop this down to Taylor. And the Colts are going to be set up with a first and goal here as the tackle made at the nine. One well, of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He's like, man, try to watch an NFL game and trying to account for their passing game? That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, here comes a back out of the backfield. And in this case, he picks up a first down. Now Minshew. And his throw is incomplete. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. Here's Minshew. To the goal line. It's batting down the hatches time defensively. Dodge two pass attempts to the end zone. Not what do you think they're going to try and dial up on third and goal? Well, knowing them and knowing what we just seen, I think they're throwing it again, don't you? I think you have to. I think in this situation, you've got to run out of your running plays, fire another one into the end zone. They'll look to throw on third and goal. to the end zone, touchdown Indianapolis. Gardner Minshew, a nine yard touchdown run. And the Colts take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. That's a tough one there defensively because look at the stops they got on first and second down and it's first and second and goal. And then on third down, they cover the receivers but he'll leave an alley open for him to find, and he does. That is frustrating. You do almost everything right, and he still ends up in the end zone. Extra point by Gay is up and good, and the lead is up to eight. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And he returns this to the 22. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. First and 10, Browning. Over the middle, he finds Higgins. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. Back to throw, Browning. And that one complete once again to Higgins. Call it a gain of a yard, and it'll be second down. A 
handoff running left mix it and a strong run that time as he's across midfield and down to the 43 that good for 19 and a first down well as we've learned over the years just because a guy plays left tackle doesn't mean he doesn't have run blocking abilities and we just saw it there controlled the line of scrimmage created a big game that's kind of a bonus he's there to protect that high value that you have back under center but he creates space in the run game yeah not only can he dance he can mash too and they run the option here on first and ten and maybe a little over pursuit there as he's able to take this down to the 25 yard line Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. Well, as a wide out, when you take that handoff and you're coming around the edge, you're expecting to see nothing but empty space in front of you. But if not... Well, things can go south in a hurry, and that's exactly what we saw on that play with a loss. On second down, here's Mixon. And some determined running there as he'll pick his way down to the 12-yard line. 68 yards rushing for him in the ball game now on 14 carries. This has been a good drive so far. It's been the running game for the most part that's powered him down there. Another nice burst there, picking up a first down. Now it's first and 10, as you said, in the red zone. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Drew Sample, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. From the gun to give to Mixon. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Bengal TD. Joe Mixon, a 12-yard touchdown run. And the Bengals are back within a couple of the lead. A strong, determined run there, Charles, to get in for six points. This is why it's such a team game, isn't it? And I know that sounds really generic, and it sounds almost trite. But the blocks were made up front, offensive line, collective victory at the line of scrimmage and downfield. And how about the finish to the run all the way into the end zone? And now he's going to go down. A big sack, and they're unable to tie it. They made the decision to go for two. They didn't get it. They remained down by two points. Should they have kicked it there? A third quarter, I'm okay with it. Maybe first or second, you don't. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm again, I keep coming back to, I don't like to chase a lot of points. Yeah. But I also don't know what kicking an extra point being down one does for me. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Colts taking the field again, running back Jonathan Taylor at center stage. He is knocking on the door for 100 yards in this ball game. And it's so important. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. Just short of it, a little bit over. A little bit over feels better to everyone. Offensive line, running back, team totals. It's just something magical about breaking that barrier. Now he's right there on the doorstep now. Now Minshew on first and 10. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. From the 21, it's second and 10.
from the gun, it's Taylor. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. Good, strong, explosive run that started inside, which means you've got to control those defensive linemen, the defensive tackles, the nose guards. Those guys have to be controlled. How about the offensive line, the job they just did? Yeah, key that A-gap usually on those runs, right? That's where it all starts because everyone wants to kind of control that area. It disrupts things from the defensive side and the offensive side. As we just saw, it opens up possibilities. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it's second down. From the gun, men shoot to throw. Connecting over the middle with Downs. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 38-yard line. That one for Indianapolis, resulting in 15 yards and a fresh set of downs. Slant route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. So they'll come up in Bengals' territory now with a first and 10 at the 38. Now a give to Taylor. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. He's having a big game running the football, but that one will hurt the yards per carry a little bit. Yeah, but the average he's got so far, that's the type of average he wants to take with him to contract negotiations, doesn't he? Third quarter of a two-point game, a good one so far. Here's second and 10. Minshew sets to throw. Throw over the middle, going to be caught here by Mo Alley Cox. Such a tough position to defend near the line, even when you add a second defender, but the big man shrugged off the extra body and made the play call a success. This will be play number seven on the drive, third and a yard. Out of the gun is Minshew. And he is caught. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 14. A little surprise pays off on third and one. Pass instead of run. Gets him 15 yards. For many people, that's not your standard play call in that third down situation. But for so many offenses, they just want the ball in the hands of their playmakers in open space. And after he caught it, he did a nice job picking up the first down. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily fell incomplete. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. Touchdown! Josh Downs. He scored on a punt return, and now he scored through the air. And the Colts are able to extend their lead. All the receivers in the league are plenty good enough. Otherwise, it wouldn't make it in the NFL. But the ones that go to the Pro Bowl, they have refined route running ability. Here's Gay now to add the extra point. And that makes it a nine-point game. So that drive consumes nine plays, all told. And it culminates in an Indianapolis touchdown. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Joe Mixon and the rest of his offense making their way back onto the field. He's had a good performance, moved the ball effectively on the ground. Of course, he has the one touchdown. And when you're able to move it as effectively as you've described, 
That leads to finding a way into the end zone, and now he's just trying to do it for a second time. And of course, with that comes additional yardage. Yeah, looking for additional yardage, and again, that second score here in the third quarter. The drive will commence with a run by Mixon. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Now Browning. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. It's a loss of a yard, so it's back to third and 10. Oh, partner, when you see a screen pass and the defensive tackle ends up making the play, you know that one wasn't sold well at all because he should be upfield by the time you throw the pass. If not, you end up with big trouble, as we just saw right there. Oh, he'll let one go deep for Higgins. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. I'm sure this isn't a novel thought, but maybe run some simpler routes instead of trying to get it all back in one shot. Defense certainly appears to be ready for him. Try and get it back little by little instead of in big chunks. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And take it right at the 35. It's a 39-yard punt, eight on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Now Jonathan Taylor and the Colts offense retake center stage. He's up over 100 yards, and he'll be looking to get in the end zone again. Has a tremendous nose for it, doesn't he? The ability to pile up yardage and find the end zone, that's the combination you want in your runner. That's a combination any coach wants, and we'll see if he can find that end zone once more. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10 at their own 42. They'll run with Taylor to begin the drive. And a strong run that time as he's across midfield and down to the 43. A 14-yard gain for Indianapolis and also move the sticks. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Cincinnati. It's the Colts. They've got control of the football. They also have the lead as we start the fourth. Throwing on first down is Minshew. And connecting here with Pittman on the out route. That'll go for a gain of seven, and that'll make it second down. A seven-yard pickup brings up second and three at the 36-yard line. Up the middle, here's Taylor. He's still on his feet. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Jonathan Taylor, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Colts have extended their lead to 15 now here in the fourth. A 15-point game now. You make the extra point, and that means on the other side you need two touchdowns and two two-point conversions. That's a pretty tall order here in the fourth quarter. Agreed, because they really needed to come up with a stop there, and even if it was just to hold them to a field goal, now they need to pull out the lucky horseshoe because they've got to get an onside kick, and we've seen nowadays those are incredibly difficult to come by. And not to mention they got to get the touchdown and a two-point conversion first. And this one's caught. And their fourth quarter lead grows by a couple more. So they go with a pass, and it works there on the two-point try. Charles, just in general, what are your thoughts passing versus running on two-point conversion? Situational? It is situational, and you have to know your team. What is your strength? Because so many people think you have to throw the ball on a two-point conversion, but the stats will tell you that running it is about as proficient. So know your team and go to your strength.
Sanchez now. He'll kick it away following the touchdown. Taking it about the one. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. A coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Here's Browning. To mix it on the check down. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. That's good for a Cincinnati Bengals. First and 10 at the 34 yard line. To throw Browning. And a dangerous throw there, incomplete. He threw that into coverage. It was nearly intercepted. There are a good number of coaches at any time they call an in route are really worried about the play because there's so much traffic ordinarily that the ball has to get through to get to the receiver. And on that play, it was batted down. Throwing again on second and 10, Browning. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. Now the Bengals on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, four for 10. This is third and 10. Now yet another incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. I think it's safe to say that he's made some questionable decisions out there so far. Forced some throws into tight coverage. He's already been picked off in this game. Fourth down now, but he was fortunate on that one not to have another turnover on his ledger. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. The Bengals try it, but it doesn't work out. And the Colts are going to get the football in outstanding field position. Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? Right. It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. On the handoff, Taylor score that tackle for loss to the Wyoming alumnus, Logan Wilson. Partner, I know my grade school teachers never would believe this, but I can absorb a lesson. I think there's a lesson in this one. He's having a great day running the football, but occasionally they're going to find a way to stop you, aren't they? Yeah, this time the defense stepped up and what's been so far a tough game for them. Second down, another run with Taylor. Takes this to the 32, maybe the 31, and then the defense rallying quickly after that broken tackle. It'll be a gain of five, and it's going to bring up a third and about seven left. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked. And well, the ball is free. Taylor lost it, and the Bengals grab it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. You and I have been around teams, and they all have goals for games, don't they? And every team we've ever talked to says what? No turnover. <laughs> don't turn the ball over. Zero. And they were that close to getting it done. Won't cost them today but they'll hate that when they're watching the game tape. Cincinnati's offense coming back here onto the field. 
And the fumble recovery was an important first step, but still a huge fourth quarter hole to dig out of. Down three scores. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. And the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. They'll set up to throw. Now that's into the hands of Mo Alley Cox, the tight end. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And that'll bring up second down. Brings up second and three at the 12 yard line. On the handoff, this is Taylor. Oh, look at the juke. And the Colts are going to have a first and goal as some good running there gets them down to about the two-yard line, knocking on the door. I know we're in the era of wide-open football, a lot of spread formations, more space, but there's still a spot for power football. We just saw some of it right there. How about that run? Yeah, breaking the tackle, and, you know, late in this game, he wants the football in his hands. He's had a good day. Taylor. Is going to take this one in for a Colts touchdown. Some good running there at the end of the drive. He had the burst that set up the first and goal, and then one play later, he's in the end zone. Brandon, what I liked about that sequence is I'm not sure who made the play call, but they understood the situation, understood the momentum. A nice hard-charging run, give it right back to him and let him cap things off. Gay is on for the point after. And the lead is now 24. A drive that time of six plays. And it was capped off by a Jonathan Taylor touchdown. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. This taken in right around the goal line. And he won't quite make it to the 25. And out now, here come the Bengals. Charles, we know that this offense is aggressive. We saw that last drive. They went for it on fourth down, didn't get it. Then they give up the touchdown. So now you feel like they really need to respond here. They certainly do, but let's face it. Sometimes when you take that risk, you understand if you fail, a little more onus goes back on your ball club to try and pick themselves back up. Throwing on first down, Browning. He'll drop this one down to Mixon. It'll be a gain of just a yard, and it'll be second down. A gain of a yard brings up second and nine at the 25-yard line. Let's go! Looking to throw, Browning. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Nowadays, quarterbacks don't mind throwing in the coverage because of the confidence they have in their receivers to come down with the ball. But sometimes you have to be careful you don't get too confident and throw an interception. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave them trying to convert on third and nine. Operating from the gun, Browning. Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Oh, 
All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have the Bengals first down, and he'll have it by plenty as it turns out to be a big gainer there on fourth down. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. You still have to get it done, as you noted, and they did. They'll look to throw again. Out to the left. He's got Sample there. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 11 more on that one and another first down. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where his coaches... You're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. It's a pick up of six. Brings up second and four. And the Colts 35-yard line. From the 35, back to work on second and four. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Tyler Boyd, the intended receiver, and it's third and four. Again, he'll drop to throw. Oh, had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. As soon as he leaked out and began his route, someone on the defensive side broke with him and arrived just in time to separate him from another reception. Zach Taylor, a new breed of head coach. He's going to go for it on fourth down. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. But no reason not to try it there. And they do indeed convert on fourth. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. Mixon with a first down carry. And he'll keep it moving down to the 15-yard line. 88 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Second down and three. Back to throw. Browning. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Operating from the gun, Browning. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And the Bengals are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. There are a lot of tough routes to try and cover. When you see a runner come out of the backfield and run this angle route. Looks like they're going to the flat and then they put their foot in the ground and cut back sharply inside. Not easily covered. And then when they catch it, good momentum built up by them as well. And able to pick up the first. Now here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. Uh, great coverage down in the end zone. He's scanning the field, looking, looking. No one ever came open. So in the end, he makes the best decision and just fires it over the end line. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. Back to throw again. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. You got to be precise with your throws, especially in this situation. You're inside the 10-yard line going into the end zone. But sometimes the emotion, the excitement, Sometimes the decisions just aren't made very well because of that. 
This likely a must-have. Third and goal. Operating from the gun. Browning. Back in the end zone. Could he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. Has to be a little bit of frustration there. Back-to-back -back incompletions. Receivers blanketed on both attempts. This time on third down. The field goal doesn't help. They're going to go for the six here on fourth and goal. Looking to throw. Browning. And that is caught, but the back judge right there to say incomplete. They can't hook up here on the fourth down pass attempt. And this long drive is going to wind up yielding nothing. So another incompletion on fourth down. They threw it on every down that series, and every pass missed the mark. The frustration is almost palpable. You can almost feel it all the way up here in the booth. But how about the guys who just stopped them on four downs? You gotta give them a little credit, huh? End up stopping four straight passes. They don't get into the end zone. They turn the ball over on downs. They more than did their job. A carry by Taylor to start the drive. And he'll take this one up to about the 13. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. That's a nice run to get himself back on the horse after his fumble. Nothing spectacular, but a good confidence-building run. Here's a second and five. They run once more with Taylor. And he'll be about a full yard shy of the 20 at the 19-yard line. Seven yards there at a first down. I've got an idea. Let's skip racing to the airport at the end of this game. Let's go to the post-game press conference. I have a feeling that the quarterback of this winning team is going to be giving a whole lot of credit to the running game and the offensive line. Yeah, I was just going to say the offensive line, yes, carrying the ball has been key, but those guys up front, they've made a lot of space. Now a handoff, Taylor with it. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now, I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're gonna call a timeout. Run the football, <laughs> we've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. Now an option play on second down. And this is going to be a Colts first down as he gets this up past the 30 to the 32. And this is one of those plays that if you can use it to keep the chains moving, it's a good play. And not only that, it tends to tamp down the pass rushers because they have to recognize this play and stay at home. The quarterback uses it well. Read option, keeps it, and picks up a first down with some nice running. On the counter, it's Taylor. Trey Hendrickson, the one who gets him on the ground. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Here's second and five now from the 37. So this one winds up an Indianapolis victory. And really, it looked at times like they just had this one in cruise control out there. Yeah, they deserve a ton of credit because you and I both know, heck, they knew. But this is a tough place to play. Overcame that with ease, robbed home with an easy win. And here's the best part for them. It'd be easy to get to the airport because the crowd left pretty early in this one, didn't they? Well, plus they have a police escort. Okay, you had to spoil <laughs> that part of it. Of course, they're going to get there. But think about how wide open things are now because this crowd didn't expect this. No. So they went back to the tailgate and said, let's go eat. This, this one did any fun for us. Yeah, they took the drama out of this one pretty early on. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Cincinnati.